Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Peter and welcome to the second part of our tutorial all about APIs and how to consume them through C-sharp. Now in the last video we made an application where if we put a breakpoint at the very end uh, we're going to uh, receive a, a wallpaper URL, right? And if we, we can visit that URL, hopefully it's nothing sketchy or controversial. That's pretty good. Um, however, we haven't, uh, sorry, the, the API URL that we're using is just, it's plain, it's, it's default parameters, right? But maybe we want to get a specific search, right? Maybe we only want a forest, uh, you know, wallpapers or um, animal wallpapers, dog wallpapers, whatever. Um, or, it, you know, just like in my case, um, I want uh, 16 by 10 wallpapers because that's the that's the ratio of my of my resolution, right? Um, another thing is that by default, as we can see in the uh, in the searching and list listings section, uh, we have plenty of query parameters here that we can use to filter our results, um, and all of these options have a bold uh, you know, bold. One of the options is like always bold with a little star, with a, with a little asterisk, and it um, it basically signifies that that's default. So when we just call our little API without any parameters, it always has these parameters set, right? So if we want to change them, for example, ratios, uh, maybe we want to uh, we can emulate what what it would do because here uh, in the latest category we kind of know. Um, we kind of, that's a weird ass wallpaper. I'm sorry. Um, I mean, hey, I, I could enjoy it, whatever. Um, so, but here's the thing, right? If we uh click ratios here and filter, let's say by 16 by 10, and I refresh, uh, the wallpapers change, right? And this is the, the first 16 by 10 uh, wallpaper that uh, I can get. I know that 16 by 9 is probably going to be the most popular option, but just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go with uh, 16 by 10. Um, and maybe maybe we could do both because they can do both like this. And you can see they actually have the query parameter here too, right? In their own website, on their own website, whatever. Uh, and if you select both of those and you um, and you refresh, you can see that now the ratios is a bit different. And it's a bit different because it's URL encoded. And so you can see that there is a there is our little 16 by 9. But then between 16 by 9 and 16 by 10, and I'm sorry that it's like tiny, um, there is a percentage 2, right? And we can we can Google what you know percentage 2 uh, URL encode. And you can see what it kind of stands for. Or was it was it more than that? Did I not copy enough? Oh, sorry. Uh, it's a percentage to C, right? Until the actual thing. You do percentage to C. Um, we can hopefully find uh, what. There's a nice question where someone literally asks that, and uh, you can see that it actually maps to a to a comma, right? And there's even someone very nice provided an entire table um with uh, all these characters that we can url encode uh .net on the other hand uh has a utility um so that we can actually url encode and url decode um uh, strings but we're not going to use it we're just literally going to use the already encoded option so in fact we really just need this part of the uh of our url and we want to add it at the end of our URL. However, uh, you can't just like slap it right there because that that's part of the path, right? And so uh, to signify the the end of the URL in a way, or end of the path, and the beginning of the query parameters, uh, you put a question mark there, right? And you can see that they do the same thing, right? There's Wallhaven CC search, which is basically kind of like it, except like what we do, except with a little API, because we actually want the JSON response. Um, and they put a they they put a question mark there and all of the query parameters. And you can see that they uh, also delimit all of those query parameters with a, with an ampersand. Um, so in this case, if we just refresh this, hopefully nothing changed. Okay, well we got a different wallpaper now. Um, we should 
now if I search here, if I stop it here, oh sorry, the breakpoint it lower. Um, now we're going to hopefully see that uh, our wallpaper that return that's returned changed. Now it should be it is right, and so it is the one that um, oops, it is the one that we kind of expected, right? That's pretty good. By the way, this is a pretty cool wallpaper in and of itself. I'm really surprised, but we're still filtering by new. We're still searching, um, you know, through new. And I don't know about you, but I don't think I really want a waffle as my wallpaper. I mean, hey, if you're into that, you know, whatever floats your boat or a car, um, I just, I don't know, maybe uh, we just want to like, maybe you just want to be cool on the internet <laughs> and just filter maybe only anime pictures. I don't judge. I don't judge you. If you want only anime pictures, then by all means. However, how do we do that? Here's a category section. Again, of course, we could copy. We could literally just copy the categories section. But it's uh, interesting to notice that you can have any combination of these. These are three sort of uh, three options here. Now, it's interesting because they signify it by sort of three bits, right? There's either one and zero in this order. It is in this order it is general anime and people. And so if you have by default, all of them are on, right? So we get, uh, we get, we get, it's the equivalent to having this, right? General anime and people. And if we want to do only anime, that would be like zero, one, zero, right? And that's exactly what we see here in the category section. So that's just one of the options that query parameters can work, uh, which is pretty cool. So we could, again, construct this. This could be constructed uh, programmatically. Maybe there are some switches. Maybe there are some booleans that uh, we kind of want to uh, use to construct this query. But for now, I'm just going to construct it sort of hard coded here. All right, so now we have a, now we have categories and we have like only anime picture we're gonna get this one i don't like that one actually can we oh which reminds me uh because we're still filtering by latest so i think it'd be great to either do hot which i'm scared of now or top list which i'm less scared of um what, what if we do anime and top list yeah that's reasonable what, what about with the ratio it's like watch Peter just like pick his wallpaper at this point. Sure. Okay. Yeah, we could do this. So uh, the way we do that, there is already we can either look up look it up in the table, which is pretty uh, pretty simple. There is a sorting, and you can set it to top list, or we can and we can confirm that again. Here, sorting is indeed top list here. So we're gonna add that at the end of our at the end of our query. And now we should get this uh, this wallpaper here, right? And you can filter by whatever you want. There's even there are even options by you know, of filtering by uh, um, words. So you can have a search query. And you can see that. Well, it th wasn't really this one. Are we sure that 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 is the 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 result we're supposed to get? Uh, does it include sketchy? What are we What are we doing here? Top list that maybe let me let me try one more time maybe. Um, okay, that's a bit that's a bit weird, but okay, sure. I don't know. We get a wallpaper, and I'm sick of. Oh, did we? Do we really do top list instead of? Yeah, that's pretty good. I didn't know this one was, but this one is like very clear. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. I'm dumb. <laughs> Uh, no worries. I only did 16 by 10, but I actually in our query, we actually include 16 by 9. And this one is very clearly 16 by 9. So this is kind of what we're getting, which makes sense. Oh, there's the same one, but without glasses. Cool. Um, anyways, <laughs> Peter, stop talking about wallpapers. So I'm sick of it. Okay, so this is very cool. Um, all right, so we're going to get uh, this wallpaper, but one of the things that I wanted to do in our application uh, before we sort of continue programming, this was this wasn't really programming; it was just editing the URL. Is I would like to um, 
move to uh, .NET 5. So when I open my terminal here and I just do .NET dash dash version, you can see that I actually have .NET 5 installed. You can get .NET 5, 5 very easily at dot, dot .NET. Um, if you had download here, uh, the recommended, the currently recommended version of .NET is .NET 5, right? So if you install that, if you install another runtime, download and, and install the SDK, uh, then we can switch to .NET 5. And the way we do that for our project is pretty simple because our project is like trivial. So if we just go to properties, uh, there's a .NET Core 3.1 and I can switch that to .NET 5. It's easy as that. And if I save it, uh, and exit, we are now using .NET 5, which also means that we can use uh, C Sharp uh, 9 features like records or implicit main. And I would normally use implicit main here, which by the way, what implicit main is, is that you don't need to include all these. You don't need to include the main method. You don't need to include the class, the namespace. You just have code in that uh, in program CS. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna look at that some other time, maybe in the in the next um, in the next a series where we're gonna look at uh, real time uh, online connection through Signal R. We're gonna make a little chat application. It's gonna be pretty cool, right? We're gonna make our own Discord without all the spyware. Anyways, I'm ranting. Sorry. Um, all right, so what we're going to do now that we moved to .NET 5, we just got like, of course, we uh, kind of got a little bit of a performance increase and all sorts of cool stuff, but uh, we're not worried about that. We just wanted to be up to date with everything else. Uh, we don't also use a runtime interrupt just yet. Sorry. Okay. So now I would like to download the image, right? I have a path to it. Peter, how do I download it? Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to do a bit of refactoring, right? Before new development, I'm just going to do a tiny, tiny bit of refactoring. So first of all, uh, the args are uh, unused, and I don't think we're actually going to use the arguments. So I'm going to do what Visual Studio suggests, and well, it's not, it doesn't, but I'm going to do it anyways, where I just am not going to include the arguments, right? Because I just don't want to work with them. It's going to be simpler that way. Now, another thing I want to do is that these lines, these four lines form a cohesive one action. And the action is get the response out of, uh, from the API, right? It gets the, the search results, right? Now, because they are one cohesive, it's like, well, they, because they're one cohesive thing, I think it would be great if that was a, if that was a method or a function, right? So I'm just going to right click it. Uh, hit this little light bulb and do extract method refactoring. Of course, if you don't have this option or you're using something like another IDE or maybe Visual Studio Code, you can do it manually. There's nothing special about it. It's just that it like it's kind of nicer when it you know when it actually does that. So uh, now, of course, uh, notice that it knew that while API response is declared here. It's also used over here, and therefore it has to be returned, right? And it also knew that yeah, but like it's a, uh, it's an asynchronous call. There's an async here, and so it has to add, it had to add async. But when it, but if it's async, it had to be a task returning option. And actually, this this time it's a task of the return type, right? So it saved us a bunch of uh, a bunch of you know typing that we really don't need to do. Uh, and it's also less things that you that you have to remember, which is always cool. So we're gonna call uh, we're gonna name it uh, something like get um, top wallpapers async async. Remember when we said oh you know there are uh, a lot of task returning methods uh, end with async right? Uh, it's just a standard right? So we're gonna adhere to it now. We're going to hit impl uh, apply, but we're going to slightly modify it because I'm not too much of a fan of this, right? So first of all, I would like to, instead of ex explicit type declaration here, I would like to do it implicitly because they because uh, the compiler will know what type this, uh, this variable is based on the return type of this, right? And the next thing is there is uh, a slight, like, 
there's no real reason for uh the return to be for, for this like intermediate variable uh when we can instead just return the actual result of the call and that's going to make it a lot easier now also notice that uh, our function is or this little this method is uh, automatically private and automatically static right that's also another thing that we didn't have to really think about and i'm going to leave it as private on other um other classes to really call it for no reason so cool so that's that's easier and we kind of have a you know a way to get a path here but i would like to um i would like to download that image right so what we're going to do is first of all i'm going to rename this for my own sake and let's call it wallpaper url technically speaking maybe you should be called a uri but whatever and then we're going to make a new method here hypothetical method that's going to be called download um download image or maybe we could also call it just download wallpaper right that'd be cool and then maybe it takes in it takes well of course it takes takes in the the url but i'm pretty sure that this is going to be an asynchronous function anyway uh because we're going to do some async in it so i'm preemptively already going to be going to put async there and i'm going to put a wait in front of it because i already kind of know that that's in the end what's going to happen right but now it, you know it's yelling at me because this doesn't exist right and here's where I can also utilize the IDE and let Visual Studio actually generate that method. Again, notice how I just don't write function signatures. I write the usage of it and let Visual Studio help me by generating these things. And again, it made a private static task returning because it needs to be async. Didn't put the async keyword in there because at this point that would be a warning. If I put async in there now, that would generate a warning, right? Um, it's all right. Warnings are not like, you know, brick walls, but it, I, it's understandable how Visual Studio would like to avoid generating code that generates warnings in return. So it's understandable. But as soon as we start using a, a, a wait here in it, then we're going we're gonna to fix that. Now, we're gonna use our HTTP client again. Now, some of you might have uh, might have done something like this, right? You might have gone on the internet and been like uh, C sharp download image, right? And you would find a response like this that says, "Use a web client." However, you're like, "Hmm, okay, what's a web client? How come we're using HTTP client? What's the difference between that?" But we're gonna do. We're going to search for the C-sharp web client. And if we open the web client documentation, uh, there's a remark here. And it says, we don't recommend that you use web client class for new development. Instead, use HTTP client class. And it's a bit of, it's a, bit of a yikes because um, this one has... A, this one has a method called download file, download file async. Um, it's a shame because we need to do more stuff now, but that's, that's going to be okay. We're, we're going to, we're going to deal with that. It's going to be all right. So here's what we need to do to download an image. And I already know it's going to be async now. Um, so first we want to use that client to get async, much like we did, uh, before here, we did get async, right? So we're, I'm going to get async. This is where I start awaiting it. And for the re request URI, in this case, see, that's why it's probably... Actually, you know what? Let's be good boys and do wallpaper URI just to, like, adhere to their uh, to their standards. Cool. Now, um, we are going to put in wallpa wallpaper URI, right? And that's going to uh, generate a response. Now, this response, again, has content, but we can't, how, when we normally did read as a string, 
it makes no sense for us to read it as a string. Instead, we're going to use this method here called copy to async, which is uh, which is a method that if we if we um, if we read about it, it serializes the HTTP content into a stream of bytes and copies it to the stream object provided as the stream parameter, right? So you put in a stream. Now streams are, well, Peter, what are what are streams, right? Well, we're not gonna delve into that just yet. There's like an entirely different, different like rabbit hole that I wanna get into. Uh, so for time's sake, if you're interested about streams, there's nothing easier than searching it on uh, MSDN most likely, right? stream uh yeah stream class and you could you could learn all about it i think it has a provides a generic view of a sequence of bytes yeah sure this is an abstract class but you can read all about uh the examples and remarks beautiful remarks about that as well uh that's why i just like love msdn so much it's it's a, such a, an amazing resource like you could you could probably program offline if you just downloaded the msdn right but anyways, anyways, and I'm gushing about MSDN. Um, content. Oh yeah, right. But we need that stream. And we're going to actually use uh, system IO. I'm using system IO, input output. This is the, the namespace where you normally have like file or whatever, you know. And we're going to, um, I'm going to write in the normal way first and then I'm going to improve it. So we're going to say using... Uh, var fs for file stream and we're going to make a new file stream now file stream again here right provides a stream for a file supporting both synchronous and asynchronous read and write operations right file stream right it's it's talking about a file and we want to store it in and if we want to make a new file right and it says hey it provides uh operations for reading and writing Right, and we want to write that content that we got into a file. That's kind of what we're doing. And so here, um, there's plenty of overloads. Um, one of them that we're looking for is a path and a file mode. And file mode is going to make sense because it's yellow. It's a, it's an enum. Uh, but we're gonna we're gonna you know it says that it initializes a new instance of the file stream class with the specified path and creation mode. All right, so. Um, and the path is a relative or absolute path for the file. Now, while we could uh, just put in like whatever dot JPEG, uh, you know, you know, like food at JPEG, we could do this. Let's do it for now, and we're gonna improve it. Um, the file access is an enum, so I can just dot into it and get IntelliSense to help me. Um, oh, sorry, it's not file access. It's uh, I. We're looking at the wrong overload. File mode. File mode. Careful about this one. Um, we can dot into it. And I'm pretty sure we're just going to use create new. Right? That makes sense. We want to create a new file with this name. Now, what happens uh, inside this uh, this using directive? Why are we... Why, why, what, what, what does that mean? Right? What is this using syntax? Well, let's first finish the um, this procedure, and then we're gonna then we're gonna talk about that at length. <laughs> um, we're gonna use uh, copy to async, as I said, well, because it's async. I need to start awaiting it, um, and it needs a stream. And we do have a stream because file system is a stream. So if I do f, uh, sorry, file system, file stream is a stream obviously this will download that file but we can make it slightly 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 better uh, or easier to read i think um in c sharp 8 i think um there was a f uh, there was an improvement to to the syntax where uh, let's first okay let's first sorry let's first talk about the using directive right what what is this what it's not a directive at this point it's a this using statement and it's already telling us that the using statement can be simplified. I'm going to get to that. Um, when you declare something in that using statement, 
and it implements an an interface called iDisposable. When you implement iDisposable, um, it has a method, the dispose method, to um, to clean up after itself, or like you know, it has something. It's kind of like a destructor in a way. Um, a lot of the a lot of internet type things, a lot of uh, c clients, and uh, where else would you see an eye disposable object for a lot of like image manipulation type of stuff or like file system uh, streams? Definitely, um, they implement eye disposable, but you need to you need to like remember to dispose of it, right? Unless you're using the using uh, statement where after it after it uh, leaves this block of code it automatically disposes which is useful but what if that what if uh what if i want to dispose of it when i like just leave the method right this is like kind of useless because at this point it's just it contains just like one thing in a way it i don't really know how to explain it super well and i'm sorry for like this choppy explanation but Look, let's see let's see what the what the suggestion is, right? Because look, if we simplify it and this is what it what it suggests, if you didn't uh, catch what happened is it uh, removed the body and then removed these uh, these parentheses. And what this means, and then I added a semicolon there. And what it means is that oh, uh, we're still there's still like auto disposal going on. But this time, it's going to be disposed at the end of the method once this thing runs out of scope. And it's kind of neater in a way if you like have tiny, if you have small methods like we do. Um, it's kind of it's kind of neat. But we have another problem. Our little URI. Um, we 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 just say we just store it as like foo.jpg, and that's not okay. Uh, because it doesn't have to be a JPEG. <laughs> that's like that's probably the biggest issue we have. Um, how do we know what type, what, what like you know, what image type or image format uh, the URL uh, URI is like? You know what the image is. Well, if we look at this example over here, it literally ends with .jpeg. And you might think, well, okay, well, then let's take the last four characters, including the dot, you know, it's like dot J B G. Um, and let's use that. However, there are formats like uh, JPEG with a with an E, right? There's uh if a lot of them are three letter three characters now that I really think about it. Um uh there's WebP, right? And those those would be those those would be problematic. If, because uh, if we just naively uh, took them, but it was like, well, Peter, but like maybe we can take everything after the first after after the last dot, which that is a good option. But why reinvent the wheel when we're already using System IO and it has a uh, really nice feature? There's a I'm pretty sure it's either in path in the path static class. You can use path dot get extension, and it returns the extension of a file path that is represented by a read only character span. Cool, whatever. It returns a read only uh, a read only span of characters, but let's be honest, it's gonna return a string. <laughs> span of characters is a string anyway. So here, right? This one returns a nullable string. Now, if we just provide it, we only provide a path and it returns a nullable string. And then, but if we feed it a read only, you know, span of characters, then it returns the same thing. So it's kind of okay, understandable. I feel like that's understandable. So here, um, we're just going to pass in the, the URI and we're going to get back the extension. Um, let's just call it like maybe file extension. And now we could, technically speaking, interpolate this, uh, which we could do either by doing like, again, the dot will not be included in the file extension, I'm pretty sure. And so we could either do like plus uh, 
Where's my plus button? Oh, do I? Am I? Yeah, I was using the wrong keyboard. Oh, what am I doing? I'm freaking out, guys. Okay. I could either do file extension like this, or I could use string interpolation. There is no difference uh, in .NET 5 at this point. Uh, it was even in core, it would, there was no difference after like Roslyn does a lot of optimization, whatever. Uh, we could string interpolate this and um, put the file extension like there. All right, so we now have a foo dot whatever. But that still isn't the best sort of thing, right? I still feel like we could get, um, you know, we could get better results. So for example, what we could do uh, when we were looking here for the extension, when I was looking for extension, it says get file name without extension. Hmm. Okay, but what about get file name? And it says it returns the file name and the extension of a file, a path that is represented by a read-only whatever. Um, in this case, if we do that, we can just call it file name, sure. And instead of the entire string, we could just provide the file name. That's better. Why? Well, let's see. This already has a name like Wallhaven with an ID dot whatever. That's, that's great. That's a unique identifier. If we try to, um, let's say, download multiple wallpapers, we don't want to really overwrite the, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe we do, but the way I was sort of thinking about it is, I don't really want to overwrite that um, that same wallpaper file. I'd like to keep all of those downloaded wallpapers safe. Maybe so that I can revert back when I don't like the wallpaper or there's something wrong, you know? So uh, that would be, th this is the result of, uh, that would be the result of the, uh, what's it called? Uh, get file name. So that's better, but at this point, we would just store it in the root wherever we're running. And I don't think that's a nice place for it. So I, I'd i really like if we could... Oh, sorry. Got a little overlay there. Uh, if we could get... Um, if we could store our wallpapers in the pictures directory, right? That'd be cool. Uh, I already have my wallpaper there, so why not, right? But how do we... So your idea might be, well, yeah, just, just find the pictures directory, but it is in the user, it, but it's, it, it is in the users folder in, uh, in Windows. So if you just go to like C users, there's a username and we don't, we cannot like, my username is just user, don't worry about it. Uh, but we don't know the user's username and it can't, so it works for you, but won't work for someone whose name is like George and it just says George. It wouldn't work, right? But that's why um, .NET provides one more cool uh, sort of API, and that's you could do environment dot special folder dot, and you have you have a lot of those. You have documents, program files, application data, all sorts of cool stuff, uh, including my pictures, right? Pictures. Uh, direct or pictures path, pictures path, whatever. Now you might be thinking, okay, well, when we get when we have that, um, you know, what do I do with this? And you could just do yet again, string interpolation, and do something like this. But we are again, opening ourselves to a bit of a problem there. Because um, when you're putting slashes in, 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 in path, um, some operating systems like them, like them to be backslashes, you know, some only support forward slash whatever, it's safer to combine that path with uh, a utility that again, we have in, in a system IO and that's path.combine. And we want to combine pictures path and the file name. And that's going to return... Why is that not a thing? Oh, because it's a special folder. Hold up. Um, and by, oh, oh. 
actually you know what let's let's look it up right let's look up why so so this returns the enum it's an actual enum value therefore this is an enum and actually it's not a path all right so well let's look it up right We're running into problems is brilliant right special folder enum and let's hope that there's an example there is an example and you can see oh environment.get folder path oh that's what we're missing right so actually and G, can I put a space there? Environment.get folder path. That's what we were missing. And we ran into an issue and it's like, well, it was easily solvable by just looking up what we're doing and really looking up the source of it, right? Because this, like they know what they're talking about, right? They, they, you know, wrote the API. I mean, clearly they should hopefully know uh, what this is. But uh, the, the sort of point I'm trying to prove here as well is that you're more than capable of finding this you don't have to like ask someone on stack overflow you don't have to you know go talk to your buddy who's a guru or what or whatever um this is quicker this is way quicker and more comprehensive for dotnet specific let me sure if you're programming like php msdn is not gonna help you but about dotnet and i'm sure like php has probably like some sort of documentation uh, you know page that's like amazing as well right but this is our dotnet bible here right like that's what we do now all right so now we have the picture path and now we combine it together to form um to, to just save our wallpaper into our pictures directory so how about we run it now and how about we run it and uh see if it actually downloads it into our uh, pictures directory. So I'm going to have it open here and I'm going to run it. Actually, I'm going to boop. And let's see. Let's see if it works, right? If it doesn't, we're going to debug. Ah, you can see here. There it is, right? It also exited after that. Appreciate. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, we have our uh, picture here. Uh, Wallhaven with the ID and it's it really is just that picture. Now, how long have been? Oh yeah, okay, cool. Just thirty-seven minutes. That's cool. That's speed run for my for my thing. Because we've got one more thing to do, and that's to set that wallpaper, uh, to set that image as our wallpaper. That's gonna be a bit a bit more interesting. Because then we're gonna do something that's wild. It's like, all right. However, uh, a big disclaimer here: the the way we're gonna do it is because this is this that's an operating system thing right and we're gonna uh we're gonna learn how to do it on windows which means that our application even though it's written in dotnet uh, with dotnet 5 even though it's like technically speaking um uh, multi-platform this code will work only on windows because well, we could, okay, well, of course we could check which operating system we're on and then we could uh, do different things for Linux. But at the at this point, uh, the way we're going to do it is just Windows only, which is which is fine for our purpose because I really just want this utility to be like here on my uh, uh, Windows machine. Also, funny thing, settings. If I go to personalization since i don't have windows activated it's like well peter you can't set your wallpaper well watch me windows but <laughs> of course like you can right click an image and hit set as wallpaper it just does it but but um cool thing you can set it anyways right so what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize uh user 32 dll which is one of your windows uh, dll's Pretty sure if we could find it probably in Windows. Uh, you think that's just user 32? I just have DLLs somewhere. I don't even know where they where they store these DLLs. There was maybe that's just uh, oh maybe system 32 user yeah this this one user 32.dll. This is the DLL that we're going to uh, that we're going to uh, bind to that we're going to use functions of. You can call functions from other libraries, right? Yeah, you probably know that, right? However, user32 was written in C++, I suppose. Um, 
much like the whole of, if not the majority of uh, Windows. So we need to bind to an external function. That's what you call it. It's an external function um, that has a C or C++ API. We can look for it. I already found it here. I did a bit of research on MSDN and I found system parameters info a function, which is, I do know that, that it is, even though it says win, it says win user dot H because that's the, that's the header file. Uh, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the point is that this is a function that has, uh, you, you this is the signature, um, and you can call it and it has a UI action and UI action is like an int representing one of these things. One of these parameters, you can get access timeout, get audio description, etc., etc. One of them is set, uh, desk. Yeah. Uh, SPI set desk wallpaper. And that's pretty cool. That's exactly what we want, right? Now it has this little hex code here, uh, hex number, um, I'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. Uh, and then also they've got like uh, other parameters uh, later on, right? Uh, but but here's, here's how we're going to do it. So we need this signature in our C Sharp app. But, okay, we're going to go go here and we're going to imagine, I'm going to put a comment here. And in this comment, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just paste this, right? So that we can look at it. Now, I'm not going to start with the extern keyword just yet, but it's going to be definitely a static bool returning because look, it returns a bool um, method called, well, I'm not going to include the A in it. Don't worry about it. Uh, this is just, uh, there's like an A and an L variant, if I'm not mistaken, right? And this is, that's one of the C, I think C or C++ uh, sort of syntax, no, sorry, uh, styles where you usually put like, um, I think it talks about some of the parameters and the types of it. It's kind of like Hungarian notation um, where you put uh, the type of it like this. You put the type of it in front of the name, which signifies like when you say UI action, it's not a UI of user interface action. It means unsigned integer. Uh, and that's the type of it, right? That's why, that's why that this one has like, PV for for pointer to void. I'm pretty sure. Which that's a that's a Windows type and uh, whatever you can you, we can always like look if you just go P void. I'm pretty sure they talk about it. They link you. Yeah, here right. They're like, hey, for more information about that, you can check out Windows data types. But you could like that's a that's an insane rabbit hole. Like you could just learn all about Windows and just uh, hack a lot of it. You know, like to get hack as in like you know put it together in interesting ways and do stupid shit. Not like, you know, hack, hack. I mean, Microsoft already hacked you, so. With their malware. All right. So what we're doing here now, we want uh, we want to emulate these parameters. But so first of all, uh, we do have unsigned ints. Uh, uh, we have unsigned ints in, uh, yeah, I can't type, uh, in C Sharp. So that's great. And we can name it whatever we want. I'm just going to stick to their... Um, to their style because this is really an extern function unsigned int uh ui param and then it has another it has a pv param and even and but we don't have p void it's not a thing in in c sharp so this type you can change this to be any type that you need you could technically speaking wrote it uh, write it generically uh have a method of t and then include the t in there and I think I've seen it uh, used in uh, one of those websites where they actually talk all, like, document a lot of these extern functions. I think they might use just off t. Uh, we're not. It's going to be fine. Um, we're going to use string because we need to provide the path to uh, the wallpaper that we um, that we want to set. Now, um, let's call it PV param. It's going to be a bit confusing. The signature is a bit weird. Um, and then at the end, there's an unsigned int f win any. Um, I read the documentation of this, and what it basically means uh, is this one uh, we set to 
one, ideally in hex, because that's what the documentation, that's how the documentation describes it. And if and this one's going to be just one, which means um, tell other, um, you know, things running that something has changed about your parameters. It kind of like refreshes your, it actually refreshes uh, Explorer so that you, you see the new wallpaper. Um, this one, the string is the path. Uh, the you in par param this one, this param I'm pretty sure this parameter is uh, whether you want it to be like tiled or sized, you know, stretch to fit that sort of option. And then uh, the action is self explanatory because, look, it literally that's the one that says set desk wall, it's this one. So you you put in uh, this hex value in there. Now, that's that. Look, if you look at it, that doesn't really work because we need to include. We need to first do a DLL import. That's a. This is an attribute that you can put on top of a, a method like this, which DLL imp, uh, uh, DLL import comes from a system runtime interop services, and it requires a couple of things. Uh, it requires the name of the DLL. And since Windows already has its own like directory, that its own system32 directory included, you don't have to specify the full path to system32. You can just say user32.dll. And then uh, one thing to also set is the character set, char set to be uh, auto. Now it's gonna freak out because it's like, hmm, yeah, but like the DLL import attribute must be specified on a method marked static and extern. Okay, it is static, but it's not extern. So let's maybe say extern, or maybe in this order, right? So that like we kind of conform with what it's saying, extern. And that's pretty cool. It's happy here, but uh, what we have here. Um, what is it suggesting? Specify marshalling for p invoke string argument. Um, uh, I don't really know too too much about this to to really. Um, but let's let's just take the hint, right? Visual Studio knows probably better. But oh, it's probably it's probably so that when we pass a string, if it includes like Unicode. But I, even though when we when we set auto when we set auto then I'm pretty sure it already like would recognize that, so it's a it's a different whatever it's fine auto I feel like auto is like oh a substitution for because like it would just probably default to Unicode anyways, but it's probably better to be explicit I'll take the hint I don't know better you know I could research this it would be fun but we only have uh, so much time. <laughs> Um, but you feel free to play around with this and, and see see how you feel about it. However, we don't want to do it in download wallpaper async. We want to make a new method that says um, set wallpaper. This one doesn't need to be async because well, it it doesn't it's not it's not asynchronous. Um, and we're gonna pass in the wallpaper, but it's like hmm, I don't know the wallpaper path. And I'm gonna need the wallpaper path, right? So I always say wallpaper path. Um, and we're gonna get it from this download wallpaper async. It's gonna return wallpaper path. And so we're gonna adjust this task return to task return of uh, returning a task of string. And then once we're here, we're gonna return, oh, which means at this point, let's extract this because that's the full file path and name. Uh, wallpaper path. And I'm going to return that, right? Wallpaper path. Now we could combine some of these variable because, uh, variables because they're like, uh, they're kind of temporary. A lot of these, like these, these two are just like substitutions for this. So technically you could grab this, put it in here. Uh, but we would lose some readability. Um, and I don't even, maybe this could be closer. So these three are like a logical piece. Uh, so this is a nice example of something that could be extracted into a method. 
and then it means like there's one there's this like uh call that's kind of like alone and then right after that we skip we do this before we work with it oh of course we need to put it here and maybe we can and we're creating this file stream here uh, maybe we could first create the file stream and then get the call like this this might this might be slightly better who knows it's uh up for interpretation here um it depends on what feels better you know all right well what we're gonna do here now is um yeah, so we returned the the thing. Now let's let's uh, let Visual Studio generate this new method. And again, this one is private static void. It's fine. It's not task returning or anything because we don't do anything asynchronous. And we're just gonna call our little extern method here. So we're gonna do system parameter info, just like this. And as I told you before, right, the the action is what we do here right this is that's the the action is set desk wallpaper so we're going to copy this you can literally you can have literal uh hex values in c sharp that's perfectly fine uh the first parameter is um pretty sure it's the type of the mode i'm just going to put zero because i really don't remember what those were and zero is going to be just like some default some nice default then the PV param is just going to be the wallpaper path. And the last thing is, as I told you, if uh, it should notify everything else uh, about the change, which we absolutely want to do. So we're just going to do one. Uh, we're just going to, we're just going to put in this hacks value there. Now this should be really it. Let's be honest. Um, this should, that, unless I forgot something, but this looks good to me. We should test that. So this time, uh, we're gonna have our pictures directory here to see um, if we get our our new wallpaper. Let me set it some in a smarter maybe way. I don't know. Should have used like uh, power toys and uh, the areas, but whatever. Okay, and we also see the wallpaper. So if I run it, hopefully, unless we get an exception, we... Oh, yeah, you know what? And we got our wallpaper set. Pretty cool. Um, That's pretty cool. I don't know how it deals with uh, trying to override this image it, because this file already exists. So let's try to run it. Maybe we're going to get an exception here. We did get an exception and the exception is on the file stream, right? When it tries to download it and it says, well, yeah, but like it already exists. So what we can do here, we can be kind of a little smart about it because they are unique. These wallpapers are have a unique ID. So what we can do uh, is when we're downloading it and we have the wallpaper path, we can say if uh, file.exists, if the wallpaper path already exists, if this wallpaper is already here, we don't need to download it again. Let's just return it. We don't need to download anything. We already have that wallpaper. Cool, right? So this is just a bit of uh, a bit of a nicety here to to kind of help us with that problem. And if we do that again, uh, it's just gonna kind of set that wallpaper, right? And that's it. Let's, you know, even if I like switch it back. And then run it again. It doesn't download it again. It, we already have it. It just sets it, which is pretty cool. So it's really nice. But Peter, I'm getting the same image over and over. Why is that? Well, the reason is pretty simple, right? It's because the result of our like top list or whatever, the, the result is kind of always the same. But what if I want to? Or do we have time for that even? Oh yeah, we do. Uh, what if I want to? Um, have a random one. I want like a random one of these images. Okay, we could do that. Um, so let's, let's get back to our code. And that's going to be something that we do here. And for now, we do first. And we really, really would like to, on top of uh, this uh, array, we would really like to 
have random one, a random one. So maybe if I say random here, that doesn't exist. Uh, link doesn't have a uh, link really doesn't have a uh, random extend uh, yeah random extension on top of an i enumerable. Um, we could write it, we could write it, or yeah, that's kind of nice though. I kind of like well if we would, but you know what we could do also instead of but we would need we would need a new new class, new static class, and define a link extension in it. So instead, we're gonna do random uh, like this. Okay, random element, get random element, sure. And we're just gonna let Visual Studio help us generate this. For now, we're gonna improve it eventually. And instead of having an an array, let's make it work for i enumerable. That's really what uh, link kind of operates on top of anyways. Um, which means we're gonna need to use uh, collections generic. And then, um, and then of course this doesn't, now it says that it returns an object. It really doesn't. It returns a, uh, what do we call it? Uh, entities. Oh yeah, it well it just returns one of them, of course. It just returns one wallpaper model. And so what we're gonna do here is of course uh random. We're gonna use random. Now random is again one of those things that you should instantiate one once per application. So we're gonna do it uh, create it just like we create our client. Static read only random R random, sure, random. So a lot of random words there. Oh, you know what we could do? You know what we can use? The new C Sharp 8 feature, 9 feature, um, C Sharp 9 feature, uh, the implicit right side new. Uh, I think it might freak out because it says, are we implicitly using the latest version of the language? Uh, Where is it? Oh, I, uh, yeah, I think it just implicitly uses uh, the latest version of the application. Uh, if it already is defined on the left side here, uh, we can just like new it up like this. And that's really nice. That's actually going to be, uh, you know, it's concise. So now what we do is we're going to get a random element. So we first have an index. And actually, you know what? We can just simplify, super simplify to just return data element at random dot next data length or count or whatever they've got so what does this mean right uh data count is going to return uh the number of elements in here and then if you just do random next and you only provide the max value then it uh, starts from zero and doesn't include that value so you have an array. You remember how arrays work, right? It's index zero, one, two, three, and that's four elements, right? And um, so this is going to be four, but that's going to generate numbers from zero to four, but not including four. So only zero, one, two, three. That's why it works, right? And we just get the element at that position. And since this is uh, so like nice and like concise, we can inline this. Right. Instead of having a body, we could put this little lambda arrow or whatever. But it's a really just a expression bodied method is what it's really called um, to just like simplify it a little bit. And then we could just like move this somewhere very low or whatever. Um, and at this point, um, I'm pretty sure we achieved a random a random wallpaper from this. Uh, Please don't be sketchy. Please don't be sketchy. I don't want to be banned on YouTube again. Oh, that's fine, right? And you can see that now we have a, we have this uh, wallpaper, which is uh, not as sketchy. <laughs> All right. And if I run it one more time, we have a different wallpaper now. They're becoming, yeah, okay, that's fine, right? So this is pretty cool. And now it's like, well, Peter, but I wanted to run, um, okay, a couple of things. First of all, we only get results we only randomize from the first page what if what if you, you you could be like well but like what if i want to um uh randomize all of them maybe from the second third fourth page etc i'm gonna leave it as a little exercise for you 
here's how you would do it. Um, you would need to extend your JSON model here um, for the second part. We we have we use the data attribute, but look, I'm going to show you an example here. Um, let's actually get back and let's copy the URL that we're ex accessing and let's open it, right? We only use this data. That's what we have mapped here, right? Only the data one the array of wallpapers as the data. But you would have to create a new entity here. And I highly recommend you do that, right? Make a new entity here, call it meta, because it's the other one, and have some of these properties. And the only, I'm pretty sure the only one you kind of care about is the last page. Is the last page, right? And then once you do that, so you so you make one call to the API, only care about the meta tag, right? Read how many pages there are, and then go to a random one. Uh, the way you go to a page is you can actually just provide a page number in the in the parameters, right? So if I say if I add into the query, if I said uh, ampersand uh, page two. You can see that now the meta says that I'm on page two and I'm getting wallpapers from page two. So you would read how many pages there are. Sorry, uh, last page. You would, and then you would r make another call with a random page, and then pick a random wallpaper. And there you go. And there you have it. Right. You'd have a completely random uh, wallpaper from a like from these pages. That is. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. But it's like Peter. I would really like this to happen automatically. Let's say every 15 minutes, two minutes, I don't know. Every, well, be careful about how quickly you do it. And don't forget that we have, we can only do 45 uh, calls per minute, I'm pretty sure. Uh, and if you're doing the true randomness, then you're making two calls per randomization of your wallpaper. So don't do it too quickly. You're going to get blocked, right? Or you're just going to get time, timed out. Um, but so what we can use is something called Windows Scheduler here, and we can set up a, a, a task, but first let's publish our application and put it somewhere we, uh, can understand. So for example, let's open folder in file explorer and I'm going to use my, uh, right. I'm going to use my terminal here to, to publish this application. Um, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to open this terminal. I'm going to open this uh, path, my, my project, where my CS project is in my terminal. And then I'm going to use, uh, and I'm going to publish it with .NET publish, oops, publish. Uh, and I want to see configuration release and the R, I was it R, R ID or R U I D runtime ID something like that uh, is uh, Win Dose Ten Win Ten X sixty four, and I could if I look up I always forget this one dot um, net publish single file single file applic no 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 here publishing a single exe in dot net core uh, we can do uh, this we can do slash b uh, publish single file true so we can add that so that it's just a single file and also i'm going to do dash o for output and i want it to output in i don't know like release folder and if i do that it's going to restore and deploy that project which means we're going to have it here there's a new folder here in our project folder that says uh release and in it we have our application we have the pdb that said that's for debugging those are some of the debu uh, debugging like elements or whatever um we don't need that and the only thing we really care about is this right these files these dlls and this exe if i didn't want these dlls to be there i could still shake it a little further and i could deploy it with like dash dash self contained false which uh well, should, yeah, which you can see actually gets rid of the other DLs and you actually get a single EXE. But 
this will only run the application will only run also look that it's smaller it's way smaller it's like 827 kilobytes verse uh the not self-contained one which might be the same size it's not no it's eh. but it includes these dll's next to it so technically speaking it is way uh bigger um i thought they were included in it they're not so i'm just you know gonna use a self contained false but the reason is the thing is this will only run on systems that do have dotnet installed if you don't have dotnet installed this will not run uh the the other version with those dll's that will run even on systems that do not have dotnet installed because you're kind of like packing dotnet with it and so here technically speaking we have this exe that when we run it it's just bam sets our wallpaper you know to something else and it'd be cool if we could make Windows. Okay, that's creepy. Uh, if we could talk to Windows and tell it, hey, uh, buddy, can you run it like every 15 minutes? That's exactly why we have a scheduled task here. So what we can do is we can click create task. Uh, let's name it. Uh, is there a simple task? Create simple task. It was a basic task. Oh, kind of froze my. Um, I don't. Well, maybe maybe just create a task. It's fine. Um. This is a bit confusing, this whole thing. It's like, oh. So the name will be uh, randomize my wallpaper. And we're at the trigger. Uh, it's like, so, so this is just for a name, right? And the trigger is going to be when it happens. We're going to make a new trigger. And it's going to be hmm, on a schedule. You know, there's plenty of things. Like on, at startup, maybe you only want to get a new wallpaper every time you start your PC um you know yeah or, or when you lock when you lock and or unlock every time you unlock your your workstation right that'd be cool but we're gonna put it on a schedule and we're gonna make it um do it daily um actually there's probably a okay so we're gonna do it one time Oh no, you know what? We just want to do it when we I'm sorry, hold up. When we start up, right? And then you do repeat. Can you do, can you even have like a no Sorry, I haven't done this for a while. Um sure, let's just do like on at startup, right? Like when when this starts and then you say repeat task every and hey, let's say five minutes for a duration duration of indefinitely. So this means we will it will change our wallpaper every five minutes. It starts, it changes our wallpaper when we start the PC and then repeats it every five minutes indefinitely. And you could you could add like, oh, you know, like whatever, like it's um uh you know oh like maybe don't do it on saturdays and stuff like that you know it's it's all right um so that's what we're gonna do and now we're gonna uh hit the action and we're gonna add a new action which is genuinely uh it says program or script and it just wants us to uh put in our program which we're going to do this is still creepy um and this is going to be just like my wallpaper setter.exe, right? I just hit it. No, stop. Uh, and we'll just do, okay, shit. Um, cool. And we'll, I'm just not. <laughs> All right. Once we have that, it doesn't, I don't think it starts automatically, even though there probably is a checkbox for it at one point. We can go to uh, the library and find, what was it? My uh, randomizer, hold up, randomize there, right? Task called randomize my wallpaper the status is uh is ready and i'm gonna right click on it and hit run and it pops up with this uh with this uh with the command line and it will pop up with this command line every time so there's i think another option um that allows us in the actions to not pop up um like um i forgot how how you did that hold up we can find it right windows schedule task without popping 
up command line. Uh, I think we're they're gonna want us to write a uh, to write a bash script, and then okay, I don't think that's it. Hidden PowerShell with no pop up. Oh, probably it, right? And uh, pa -pa 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 -pa. you know, I think a great way to do it would be to write a a little bad script, and um, yeah, right. Hmm. Write a little script. The only solution to this problem seems to be to schedule this VBS in the task scheduler. I don't think that's that relevant for us. Anyways, um, this is going to be fine for now. Uh, if you don't do it as frequently as like five minutes, which I do for some reason, um, let's see if, if it triggers for us because um, it should, hopefully. <laughs> Let's actually check when it triggered last so that we know if we if it should have done that or, or not. So let me just make it whatever. Uh, last runtime was, uh, that definitely wasn't the case. It was like 1999. Yeah, I'm, you see, I've been here for a while, guys. Um, repeat, yeah, yeah, yeah. After trigger, repeat every five minutes. And then, like, I already did manually trigger it, so probably should. Task has not yet run. Can I refresh this and maybe see if that... Uh... Hmm. The oper yeah, see, the operation... Oh, there we go, right? 39, so technically speaking, every five minutes, so it's going to be 40 core. So in... Uh... Two minutes, our little console should pop up and do it and uh, change our wallpaper. And so if we didn't want that to, to, to happen, we would uh, write a bat script, right? And in that bat script, I, I can probably look up how to do that if you guys want to really like use it for real. And that's like bat uh, script. Um, oh, wouldn't it? But wouldn't it still open... Wouldn't it still open the script? There's def. You, you need. I'm sorry. You, you just need to kind of like look it up yourself. I'm kind of tired already. Um, but there is definitely a way to do it silently. There absolutely has to be. It's probably a checkbox in the scheduler, to be honest. But um, yeah. So we're just so that's gonna be it for this series about apis and consuming apis and setting wallpapers and doing cool stuff in the next uh in the next uh series we're going to learn about signal r and about deploying uh c sharp applications uh on our servers and we're gonna make a little chatting application where like really like even deploy it and like actually have it it's written in, we're gonna be written in c sharp uh, where you can talk to your friends or send messages or maybe even make like a little mini game or game whatever um with signal r and that's going to be really fun guys because it's really simple you'll be surprised how trivial it is with dotnet 5 and uh, the technology stack that we've got right here and here comes the moment it's 44 but i don't think i did it exactly on the minute it'd be funny if this one was just like an actual like sketchy image please please work i believe in you <laughs> i believe in you if you're playing a game and it just like pops up you know and it like minimizes your game that would be the most frustrating thing but at the same time what we could do is you could have a trigger only when you unlock your pc you know that's clear like you wouldn't mind that something pops up a little Please work. This is the only thing that we don't do through C Sharp, and it kind of shows because we're like depending on Windows doing things. Why are you not? Why are you not running? 
Ooh, that's a yikes. All right, so let's check out the scheduler. Uh, randomize. After trigger, repeat every five minutes indefinitely, and it triggered 39.21. Well, in that case, you should have... <laughs> it should have, but it should have triggered. Oh, uh, well. Oh, well. We're going to have to... I'm, I might make a follow-up video eventually if I, if I, uh, maybe it's like, you know what we did? I think I know what it is. I'm sorry to like play around with this stupid thing, but there is a, tr there is probably a trigger that says, I don't know at task creation, right? When it when it is created. Oh, that's that's what I wanted, right? And we're going to repeat it every 5 minutes indefinitely. Sure. Um bam and then we're going to delete this and the action is just starting the program, which by the way, I'm still going to check if there isn't like a sh silently, just do it, you piece of, uh, all right, whatever. I swear there is. Allow task to be, yeah, yeah, stop task. Run task as soon as possible after a scheduled start is missed. Sure. If the task failed, restart every no. Stop the task if it runs too long. If it runs longer than three days. Guys, if your applications run longer than three days, I'm sorry. If the running task does not end when requested, force it to stop. Yeah, sure. Do not start a new instance. And we're gonna run with highest privileges. Hidden, hidden. You see that? Hidden. Is that hidden like from this? Or hidden, like hidden, hidden. <laughs> I'll just put I'll just put hidden in there because I don't know. Oh look, it well it ran automatically. Oh great! So now it actually ran, and I swear we're gonna waste five more minutes. But guys, and hidden didn't do anything by the way. So oh look, we got a cool little. This is actually a really cool wallpaper. I actually really like it. Um, so I'm gonna use this time to talk to you guys about um a couple of other things uh, how long is this video <laughs> oh sugar um so um if you guys watched all the way here then you guys are either insane or <laughs> really like-minded and um so i would like to use this opportunity to invite you to our um to our little secret discord server uh it's like a little programmer club um where you can meet more like-minded people and talk about all these things uh i'm there as well so feel free to talk to me if you feel like it um you can talk about anything not just really programming but of course uh it's a it's a programming club so it'd be I think it'd be cool if we could talk about programming. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and so you can you can find that Discord server if you go to spellos.net forward slash Discord. That's spellos.net forward slash Discord. It's super tiny because I don't know I don't want anyone else to see it. Um and when did when did this trigger, by the way? How long do we have? Was it really 47? So like waiting until 52? Like three more minutes. And then 24, by the way, 24 seconds. Um, I'm going to pause it. Can I pause the recording? I don't want you guys to... No, you can only stop it. That's a yikes. All right, so uh, in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys uh, had fun with this uh, with this series. I sure did. It was nice and short, you know, nothing that goes for like 20 parts or anything. Uh, 
we'll see how we're gonna expand uh, you know with the uh, with the whole chatting application and uh, the signal r application those are gonna be a bit more complex and we might even delve into some uis and uh, possible sort of you know chat interfaces that sort of a thing uh, which is definitely going to be really cool i'm really excited for that um and we're of course going to talk about the deployment of it so we're actually going to get it like up and running uh, it's partially going to use the tutorial that i already published about uh publishing asp.net applications on your vps servers virtual private service servers yeah on your vpss um and yeah so we're just vibing now we're just like see we did a good job you deserve a cookie for your patience i do occasionally also stream so if you guys would like to see some live programming or ask some questions i sometimes play like games which is like okay whatever who cares but um so feel free to check some of my uh check my twitch you can find it again at twitch tv forward slash spells or spells.net forward slash twitch because haha you put my name after your domain i'm gonna put your name after my domain <laughs> that'll show them all right now one more minute and hopefully we're gonna see the wallpaper change if we don't i'm sorry like i'm sick of task scheduler you know <laughs> But we did, we have a little cool application. It's really cool. I really like it. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys uh, so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Now, let's see. It was 24. It was 24. Okay. 20, 19, 18. It's like, like new year. I'm already sick of this wallpaper change it change it for me oh almost spilled my drink that's how sick of this wallpaper i am please trigger please i yes yes uh oh ending on a sketchy note all right see and ladies and gentlemen we did it we got random wallpapers from an api uh all right well Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. I'm glad we did it. Yay.